morning and welcome back to the adventures of Mac Namphia. This morning uh, we've got something a little bit different for you again uh, but first I'm going to give you a quick bit of background. Um, me and Amphia uh, have had a pretty crappy two weeks to be honest. Uh, you won't be surprised to know that uh, off grid isn't always uh, the bed of roses that people often make it out to be. We have the same sort of problems as everybody else, you know, things not doing what they're meant to do, more in particular people not doing what they say they're going to do, which generally makes our lives hard. Now, uh, I'm not going to go through all these little bits and bobs, you know, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to show you the main thing that's caused us the problem uh, and grief at the minute, and that is a, a solar power failure. So, um, our power inverter for our solar power system uh, is developed a fault. Uh, there's been a component failure, namely uh, one of the cooling fans, which comes up as uh, error number one up on the display screen. Now, I, uh, I, che I check the solar power system almost every day. I go in, open the door, have a quick check on it, make sure everything's okay. And I had been noticing that the, the fan was getting a touch noisy. So, um, I had the inverter apart a little bit, pulled one of the fans out to get all the details off it. They, uh, they all come in various sizes and volts and amp differences. Uh, and, uh, and I ordered some new ones. Uh, there's two fans in there. One of them was uh, vibrating a bit and making a bit of noise. I thought, well, one's gone. The other one's probably not far behind it. I'm not going to mess about. I'll, I'll order the, uh, the two all at once and replace them both. Um, I ordered them from China, so we're looking on about uh, what, se uh, seven days. Uh, it's actually made it here in seven days, including the weekend, so five working days, which is pretty good straight from China. And I've got them now. Um, I'm going to fit them in a minute, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to quickly uh, rewind, you know, a week or so and show you the hack that I tried. Now, this is a hack that may or might not work for you. Uh, I've seen it done before and it's described as a repair. I certainly wouldn't call it that. It's, uh, it's something you could try to temporarily keep your system going until your new parts arrive. So we'll, uh, we'll move around a week, we'll have a quick look at that and some B-roll, and then I'll bring you back in and tell you what I'm going to do today. Okay, so I'll give you a quick demonstration of, of what's happening. Everything's switched off at the minute, all the fuses to everything, the batches are switched off, the inverter's switched off. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to flick on the, the PV uh, fuse up to the solar panels, and it's starting up as it normally would. I haven't actually switched on the inverter yet. But straight away we've got the fault light come up here, constant buzz, and the error code is number one. Now I'll just quickly try and switch on the inverter, see if it clears. Switch it on at the switch. Nothing. Okay, so I'll shut that annoying noise off. Okay, so I've looked in the book. Uh, fault code one is, uh, with the constant buzz, is change it to the fan. Now, I've, uh, as I said earlier, I've already had these fans out and because when this one was making a bit of a noise and I thought, yeah, I'll quickly order some more. They're on their way. They should be here in seven days. Uh, and I ordered them about two days ago. Unfortunately, that, that's not much help to us right now. So I did, did make a bit of a mistake when fitting this uh, inverter. The filters you have to clean are at the top here. So I wrongly assumed that the actual fans would be inside here and not down here at the bottom. And they really could do with more clearance. I've put the uh, fuse boxes up here quite tight because I don't want lots of cable hanging out and that, and I thought it'd just be tidier. But in reality, I could have done with at least sort of 30 centimetres, so up to here between the two. So when I do actually replace these fans, I shall actually hire this whole box, which isn't ideal, but it's not the end of the world. I hire it sort of here and extend the cables a bit just to give us a bit more clearance. So, okay, I've already had these out. I've taken out two, uh, two of the screws at the back here. And on these ones as well and i've just put the two front ones in loosely until the new ones arrive so i'm just gonna this one's the one at fault i think i'm just gonna quickly take the screws out of here uh and get that one out and then we'll see if we can uh, find this little hack whether it's going to work and tie this over until the new fans get here okay that's those uh, screws out again and this hopefully should slide more or less out uh, i originally took this out just so i could get the voltage and the code off this before ordering a new one just to make sure i got exactly the right fan so, okay, I'm going to try and take this label off here and see if I get access to the centre of the fan and whether dropping in a bit of WD-40 and that's going to work. Okay, that's the sticky label off and I've quickly stuck it up there. But it looks like we've got another sticky label underneath here as well, so I'll get that one off as well and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I've had a look. Uh, there looks like there's a tiny little bit of rust or maybe corrosion in there. So I think what I'm going to do, I've just had a little, little clean with the tissue. I'll stick some WD in, leave it a few minutes, and then we'll give it a spin and see what happens. Okay, that looks, give that time to soak in and that. 
So let's give it uh, a little test. I'll just hand you over to Alfie while I set this up. Okay, so I'm going to switch the, uh, the solar panels back on again. And this fan's sparking up. Feels lumpy. It does feel lumpy in my hand, that bearing in that. Okay, but we've got a buzz. Come in. It stopped, it switched to go over to the other fan. So let's try actually switching the power on. And that fan switched back in, kicked back in again. And the batteries are charging. So that's worked. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to clean out any uh, residual wetness in the inside of there. So it's not dripping all through on the fuses and that. Stick the stickers back on. And hopefully that will tide us over for, for the next five or six days until the new fans come. Okay, so that, that, that's that back in. This is all the uh, the crap that came out at the end of it. It's definitely rust and corrosion in there. So I don't know, somehow damp or condensation has managed to get in there and, uh, and basically killed the bearing. So okay, let's just give it the final test then. So, solar, solar panels back on. Connected okay. That's normal, normally does that. And the fault still. Try the power on. Okay, so as you can see, even though it worked out the machine, once it's back in the machine, uh, we've got the same old fault again. It's charging and it's uh, it's doing a different beeping, but it's still a fan fault, uh, zero one up here. So I think it's safe to say uh, if the fan is too far gone, which I think that one probably is, that hack doesn't work. So as you can see from that, that hack's uh, far from ideal. It's uh, at best a temporary solution if it works. And in our case, it certainly didn't. Yeah, you probably noticed there was uh, quite a bit of rust that somehow got into the bottom of the fan. I don't really know what's happened there because the, shed, the shed's not damp. Uh, and really with it being warm all the time, it should really stay, you know, quite dry, the inverter. The only thing I could possibly think of I, is I had it under the bed for a couple of years in a spare bedroom against the ceramic tiles before we actually fitted it. Uh, and it may have, you know, developed some condensation in the bearings then. But anyway, by the by, you know, they've had it and they've got to be replaced. Okay, so I've already had this off this cover, but I'm going to, I've put some screws loosely back in. I'm going to take this top cover off again, uh, and we can open it up and have a look what's inside. Okay, so that's the cover off. It's uh, three screws down each side and uh, two on top. What I've done is I've, uh, I've taken the screws out, I've turned the panel around here, and I've just inserted one of the screws back in the in the top again. Just hold it out of place. I always try and avoid disconnecting anything that I don't have to. I mean, you could damage the connectors. There could be certain components that need to be reprogrammed back in if they're disconnected. If you don't need to do it, why risk it? You know, I'll just let that's got the panel out of the way, and now I can work on it. Now, I'm going to admit you half this stuff in there. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does. But the bottom line is I don't need to. I've got basic electrical knowledge and common sense gets you a long way. Uh, you've got two fans here. Okay. They're obviously for cooling. They're obviously two heat sinks. They're obviously to, heat, to cool those two heat sinks. We've also got two wires that come to a thing that stop there and don't connect to everything else. So they're obviously some sort of sensor. Now, if there's on a heat sink, I think it's safe to assume that that is the heat sensor. Now, at the end of that heat sensor, there's just a plug-in connector. And hopefully you can see on these fans, because they're tucked up inside, sort of here. Right. They're, they're just straight connectors as well. So I think what we're going to do to start with is just unplug that connector on the fan that's not working. I'm going to do one at a time so we don't switch the connectors around. And take them on and have a look. Now looking at the new fans that have come, this wire is considerably longer. And looking at the heat shrink sort of around here, it's obviously been uh, extended the basic the standard fan in the factory. So I think probably what we have to do is we're going to have to extend one of the fans we've got with the original wires uh, and reconnect that back up. Now, don't know a huge amount what's going on in this box, but what I will say is this. There's almost certainly power stored in this box somewhere, even though it's disconnected from everything. So certainly you need to avoid anything, sticking your fingers in anywhere where you, do, where you don't have to. And certainly where you see anything where there's a... A coil, 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 anything like that, you want to be keeping your fingers and your screwdrivers away from them. Because you could quite easily have a lot of residual power left in them, which could give you a decent shock. Okay, so I, I'm going to carefully get in there with some long nose pliers and unplug the particular fan, which I think is at fault, uh, and get that out. And let's have a look at that then. Okay, so there, there's the fan out. Quite literally took her less than a minute. 
as you can see, uh, they're identical. The stickers are missing off this one where I tried to do that hack. But other than that, they're identical. Incidentally, the, the two fans is another one here. I bought two uh, new ones from AliExpress, including free shipping, come to just under 17 euros, which I think is pretty good. Um, you can see from the original, the cable's longer than suspected, and you can see the sort of uh, shrink, shrink wrap put on here and that bit crudely put on there. So I'm going to have to extend this wire. It's looking as though the connectors are the same. So uh, probably won't have to swap that either. We'll probably keep the original one, I suppose, and, uh, and just connect it up to there. But that's going to be a pretty simple job. The wires are colour-coded. They're all the same colour as the original. So, yeah, should be pretty easy. So, as you can see, I've, uh, I've stripped this heat shrink off. Uh, and it's exposed these... Uh, well, it's basically just extended wires, as suspected. All they've done is they've, uh, they've cut the, uh, the connector off the standard fan. And uh, they've extended it slightly. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these again. Uh, cut the connector off the end of the new fan and solder them uh, back together again just the same as they've done. Okay so I've just soldered those wires uh, and we're going to get on with the job uh, in a minute but I just wanted to break into this video here just to say I've got something really interesting coming up at the end of this video and even though this is the end of sort of this job it's by no means the end of the video. Uh, there was an unforeseen uh, problem with this inverter cutting out uh, the sort of thing that after the fact is blatantly obvious. You think, oh my God, why didn't I think of that before? But uh, but before the fact and when you were building the off-grid system and solar panels, I didn't think of it. Um, it's potentially going to be a game changer for us. Uh, it's definitely something you want to be watching. Always certainly want more information on if you've got any interest whatsoever in off-gridding. Uh, so please stay tuned. Bear with me. Let me finish this job. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you this uh, new thing that I've got coming. Okay, so I've got those wires quickly soldered on there. In a minute, I'm going to just put these little bits of uh, shrink, uh, heat shrink over the top to protect them, and then one large bit over the lot to protect all of them. Um, I've used my little gas solder. I find myself using this more and more often. Um, unless I've got a lot of soldering to do, I've got a, a posh tabletop one. But unless I've got a lot of soldering to do, by the time I've uh, set up the desktop one, I've already done it with this little gas one. It's, uh, it's well handy. And of course, at the minute, I've got no power. So unless I'm going to put the uh, 600 kilowatt backup gen generator on to power a soldering iron, uh, the gas one was definitely the best choice. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off that little job, a little uh, bit of a heat shrink on there, uh, and then we'll get on with fitting it back onto the inverter and then onto the final part of the video. Okay, that fan's back in. I've just screwed it in with the uh, two front screws. Last time when I did the hack, I'm not sure if I can't remember if it came up on the video or not, or whether it's included earlier on in the video. But um, I actually tested the fan whilst it was laid in my hand, and it worked fine. You know, it didn't it didn't pick up a fault or anything. I suspect that's probably because the the softness of my hand was cushioning the fan and reduced vibration. Once I bolted it back into the uh, rigid chassis, and of course you had this vent restricting the flow a little bit. It obviously caused more or more vibration or more more friction and uh, and cause the fault again. So I'm going to test it this time inside the chassis before we continue on. So here we go. I'm going to stick the uh, solar panels on first. Okay, our fan's starting up. Straight away, it's not as noisy as it was before. Let's see if we can quickly look around the corner onto this. We should get a beep in a minute. Uh, there we go. And that's just stopped. So that's stopped that. So that's not constantly beeping. So now we'll, we'll switch the inverter on. Beep again, it should stop. Okay. And now I'm going to switch the batteries on. One, two. And let's see if they're charging. Okay, we hear some clicking coming from the inverter. And there we can see it. See the lights are flashing on and off there. People who aren't familiar with solar panel, that means the batteries are, are charging. Okay, so I'll say, I'll say that's uh, safe to say that's that's fixed. Uh, I'm going to replace this other fa fan. It's working, but I'm going to replace it anyway because I've got it all to bits. I'm going to have a little clean around. So what I'll do is I'll finish this job. I'll put this all back together, uh, and then we'll move on and I'll and I'll show you the uh, the thing I've been talking about at the end of the video, uh, the, the sort of game changing item uh, to stop this disaster again. So as you can probably see in the background, we finally had a, de had a delivery. Just turned up today, uh, what's been a few seconds of waiting for you guys, there's been seven days for us here. But finally it's arrived, we're here, we're happy, it seems to be in one piece. So in a minute I'll uh, I'll get it unwrapped, I'll spin you around and we'll have a look what we've got. Okay, so there it is. 
I can hear you all thinking now, um, okay, so what's the big deal? It's a fidge freezer. We've waited all this video to see this. Well, it is a fidge freezer, you're correct, but this one comes with a bit of a twist. This is actually powered, uh, it's actually a two-way fridge, and it's powered by butane or propane gas and electric. Now, uh, for many of you who've got caravans and motorhomes in the past, you're probably fully familiar with... Uh, oh, it's getting up. <laughs> fully familiar with the uh, gas fridge freezers. Uh, and I've, I've had them in our motorhome, and I'm really impressed with them. I find, I find they're a great thing. They're very little gas. They, uh, they really keep things colder, far colder than an electric one does. So, hopefully this is going to uh, prevent a major problem for us. In the future, if we have an electric failure, we'll still have this running on uh, butane and we won't have all our food spoiling, especially if we're doing like our uh, one, two months tour up to northern Spain. The last thing we want to be doing is rushing back for food or come back to a load of spoilt food. So, yeah, hopefully that's going to cause uh, solve that problem. So, at a later date, I will be doing a review on this. Um, as with all things, I don't like to do out-of-the-box reviews, especially on things like this where, you know, you, can, you only really know if it's any good or not after it's stood the test of time. But I should definitely do a review on it. There'll be a lot of people out there who will be interested in off grid to see how well this performs and I suppose more to the point, actually how much gas it uses, you know, how long a bottle of gas will last before you have to change it over, which will really give us some idea of how, how economical it is, you know, and whether we're actually saving any money. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap that video up there. Um, I'm back down at the farm now. We've been staying down there in the motorhome uh, since the piece has been out of action, also when the electric was out of action, which is no great hardship. It's quite nice staying down here. Um, tomorrow morning I'll get up and I'll pull the old fridge freezer and chest freezer out and uh, see what less lost treasures lie behind them. Uh, get this new fridge uh, freezer fit, the gas one, and we'll see how we go on. Um, there will definitely be an update on it because I think it's the sort of thing that people will be really interested in. Uh, hopefully though not for a month. Now if anybody has any questions in the meantime, sort of they do about three different sizes, there'll be various questions, you know, if you, if you want to know and you can't wait a month, just leave something in the comments and I'll uh, answer those questions as best I can. So I think all that remains now is uh, thank you for watching, uh, please hit like and subscribe, it really helps the channel, and I'll see you next time.